Um, so now uh, we have a talk um, on um, should we return to Python 2? And in this interesting talk, um, we're going to be discussing the uh, migration to Python 3 and um, uh, Python 2 relics uh, that are still there in the code. Uh, our speaker is uh, Miroslav um, Shedibi. Um, he is a software engineer at, tra at the Trayport company uh, based in Karlsruhe in Germany. Um, and I think it's going to be a very interesting talk. So uh, hello there. Hi. Hello. Happy to be here at home with you all participants of EuroPython, looking forward to meet you in person next time. But now let's have a look at some Python 2, Python 3 code together. So the question is, should we return to Python 2? And the answer is no. Um, well, maybe why? Why shouldn't we return that? And why I'm asking this question? Um, last year, at the beginning of last year, I just put some sort of joke uh, on Twitter uh, that people should abandon uh, Python 2.7 and move to Python 3 finally, because uh, Python 2 doesn't work in 2020 anymore. And then last year, later last year, I had some time to have a look at some projects and contribute to some online projects, uh, GitHub projects uh, of Python, and see whether they have already moved to Python 3. And most of them did. But I had an experience impression that they uh, kept some sort of backdoor in their code and kept a lot of Python 2 code within their Python 3 code, but a lot of code that works for Python 2 and doesn't really make sense in Python 3. It works in Python 3, but you probably don't need it in Python 3. And then I wanted to look at it. So my name is Miroslav Shedivy. Um, I'm now based actually in Vienna together with uh, Trayport Austria a company that uh, uses Python for uh, online uh, trading uh, of uh, energy and uh, other commodities. And I'm every day using Python to make the sun shine, the wind blow, and the gas flow. We ca you can join our stand, our booth uh, at uh, the conference, in the conference uh, chat, uh, and I will be happy, and my colleagues as well, to welcome you and uh, speak to you about what we do exactly. But what is now my talk about? I suppose, I assume, that you have already migrated your project to Python 3, to some version of Python 3. So it works in Python 3, but maybe there is still something interesting that we can have a look at, and that may be uh, a possibility to improve your code and make it a future proof. Uh, the question is, which Python version should your code support? This is the calendar of uh, all the Python versions with uh, the bold uh, parts uh, in which months they are fully supported and the new uh, features come in, and when they are only security uh, fixes. So we are now in summer 2021, and you see Python 3.9 is now the main version. 3.10 is somewhere in the near future. Everybody knows about it, but it has not been uh, still fixed. And 3.8, 3.7, 3.6, they are still with security fixes, provided with security fixes, but they are not uh, developed uh, anymore. And 3.5, 3.4, and 2.7, they are dead. They are, I'm simply dead. So forget about them. So it means now, which version should you support? Now, there are two possibilities. One is you have your app, your program that runs on your computer, and that should be like uh, really supporting the latest features, then go with uh, Python 3.9, because this is something that is currently developed. And later, in a few months, you can switch to 3.10 and so on, because nobody uh, depends on you. But if you have a library, and you expect other people to work with it, then don't f uh, stick to a single version. Because you, if you want to go to the future, your code has to be maintainable, and your code has to be upgradable also from the point of view of the other application uh, authors or uh, programmers. This means that your code has to support at least two or preferably more versions so that if I am as an application uh, developer, I want to switch from one version to another, then 
both of them are supported at the same time, which means that if you have a library right now, I would recommend you to support 3.6 to 3.9, later add 3.10, then drop 3.6, and so on and so on, and then just move uh, move this cascade uh, further and further. Um, in general, if your code uh, runs Python 3, of course, your prints are functions, your uh, you are iterating over dicts, uh, not with iter keys, iter values, iter items, but directly with keys, uh, values, items. You don't use X range, you use range. And probably you still have some pieces of code that uses six, which was a library to uh, support both Python 2 and Python 3. Now you can probably get rid of them. Then check if you, somewhere in your code, uh, have an if, uh, part where you do something different for Python 3 and Python 2. These are all the places that you can actually get rid of. Or if you try to import some library that is uh, in uh, Python 3, but not in Python 2, then you have probably some try except with import error. This is everything that you can already get rid of. So just check your code. And uh, before we touch the code, actually, we must make sure that it runs. So you have, if it is a GitHub project, you very probably have already some uh, nice running uh, structure uh, with uh, GitHub workflows, um, and uh, very probably you are using Tox. I hope so. Um, your Tox uh, file, very simple, uh, lists all the Python versions uh, that uh, your code should support, and then you just uh, run PyTest. Do you run PyTest? You should run PyTest. Um, and the, all this is run within GitHub workflows. So you have some simple CI.yaml uh, file that uh, supports uh, exactly these versions. And now it is 3.6.3.9, but later you will update it to 3.10 and remove 3.6 and so on. And this is something that when I, in winter, when I contributed to some projects, I just checked, oh, they are still supporting 3.4, 3.5, so just drop it and move to the later versions. And this is something that every year should be touched every time a new version of Python comes out. Um, now, the code quality or the content of code also evolves because you also have to up change your code because code in Python 3.5 is not like 3.9. And then there is this um, uh, nice uh, overview of uh, all the main features of uh, Python versions uh, from my friend uh, uh, Jürgen Gmach. Well, and you, here you see, for example, if your code supports 3.6, you can already use F strings. You can use underscores and numerical uh, literals. But if your code is uh, only using um, supporting several versions, then you cannot use, for example, uh, Volrus operator some generic types uh, or uh, the latest uh, pattern matching because it is only in 3.10. So you have actually to take care of what can you support. But from 3.6, you have already plenty of beautiful features. Um, then there are some places in your code, for example, at the beginning, coding UTF-8, remove that line. You don't need it because in Python 3, that's default. Um, if you construct a class that uh, inherits from object, don't mention this object. You can just remove it because per default it uh, inherits from object. Um, your super uh, function call also um, in the, the default is there that you are probably using and uh, remove it. Make your code simpler, more livable. Um, uh, there are, for example, Unicode literals. Uh, you can remove them because everything is Unicode to, uh, per default um, in Python 3. And so and there are plenty of such small things that you can do automatically, more or less automatically, but fortunately there are tool stuff for that. And for example, Otanisotile wrote a great tool called PyUpgrade that you just apply on your whole code and you say, I want at least Python 3 or Python 3.6, 3.7. And it tries to update your code as much as possible without doing anything too much. And then your code will be automatically more modern. Uh, you just, just do PyUpgrade uh, and uh, then list of files and then it, it is quickly, and you can diff uh, and uh, put it in Git uh, as a new commit, and then you see actually what uh, changes uh, have been done. Uh, also make sure uh, that the code looks good, that your diffs are minimal, and every diff is uh, like needed, eh? because if you if your code, uh, if you want to add some new parameter uh, in a function, uh, and you have to add commas before, after that, uh, then the diff is not clear. But if you use, for example, something like black, blue, or yap, then the code will be more legible. The diffs will be more legible and more, uh, more logical. Also, make sure that Flake 8 or Pylint are happy. 
that you just run take flake, flake 8 and you see uh, if there are any issues with your code and fix them. Uh, and then your diffs uh, and modernization will be much easier and uh, much more transparent. Um, Pi upgrade will also touch your streak formatting. So of course you should use F strings because they are cool in most cases. Um, but it will not do everything because uh, sometimes uh, the F string is longer than uh, the older ver version, so it uh, won't touch. But check it, uh, see the difference, and uh, with your human intelligence, human eyes, just say, "I, I can, I can update it. It looks better after that." Um, there is one place where you should keep the old uh, formatting, and uh, that's exactly in the log messages. But this is something that Pi upgrade uh, won't touch. And uh, there are also some. Issues, for example, here, uh, this was in PyTables, um, there was um, one uh, line of uh, coding Latin one, and I wanted to remove it, like to make everything UTF-8. Uh, and that the logic behind that was uh, much more complicated. And actually, I had to do something that was not so visible at the first sight, but that worked at the end. So from the three um, unidentifiable uh, characters, I created a longer um, string and uh, then it works but this means that i was able to touch the code and uh, to change it so it works again or that it works it still works because if you have code that you are you are the sole maintainer of the code and you are afraid of touching it because it works then it's a bad code you should uh, be able actually to touch any line of code uh, that you are a maintainer of and uh, then it is the code is uh, probably much uh, better much more much easier to maintain. Um, the Unicode characters, of course, if you want to type my last name, you can type it directly as Unicode. You can also use uh, the, uh, the code points, uh, but if you want to make it readable and you want to stick to ASCII only, then you can use the last version, which uh, enters directly the Unicode names uh, of those uh, characters. Numbers. There is something that has changed uh, in Python 3 uh, comparing to Python 2, and that is dangerous if you don't take care of it. So, for example, math floor, math sail, and round, before these numbers returned floats. Now they return uh, integers. So in the old code that works both in Python 2 and Python 3, you have something like that. But imagine there are plenty of young developers who um, don't, uh, who have never seen Python 2 code, and when they look at this, why? As floor must sail around, they return integer. Why do they convert it to another integer? So please remove all the integers. The reason why it, this has changed was that earlier uh, there were not enough uh, integers because floats was longer than the range of integers. So they kept uh, floats uh, as a result of uh, these three functions. Now integers have an in undefined or like inf infinite uh, range. And um, that means that now it's easier to work with uh, integers. And actually, you should always work with integers. They are much sane, more sane to, to work with than, uh, than floats. So we remove the integers. Um, yeah, this is exactly the reason, because in Python 2, the maximal integer was uh, some 9, 9 billion, trillion, quadrillion. Uh, and the float uh, was uh, 10 to the, point of, to the power of uh, 300. So now integer is, are not limited. Um, another uh, reason to, uh, or another pieces of code that uh, work both in Python 2 and Python 3, but they don't really make sense in Python 3, is, for example, something like this. You want to calculate the average uh, or the arithmetical mean of uh, these uh, four numbers. If you do something like this in Python 2, then you will get an, uh, the integer uh, that's just wrong. So usually what you would do, you would convert the first part, the second part to flow, or you would multiply everything by one. But in Python 3, uh, integer divided by integer returns a float already. So why would you convert one of those into floats or multiply it with one? Doesn't make sense. So just remove it and do it uh, the standard way. If you want, if you are still in the migration, just from future import division and your Python 2 code will behave the same way as uh, Python 3 anyway. So now this is actually correct and do it simply integer divided by integer and keep the integers as long as possible. Because as soon as you convert to floats, you lose uh, some precision and every time you calculate anything with floats, you lose the precision. Because God make the integers, all else is the work of men. Use integers.
For example, there are some floats that even don't exist. If I take this number in the first line, it doesn't exist as a float because at this range, this high range of numbers, um, the the difference between two following uh, two consecutive uh, floats is already two. It means that there is uh, 992 and then there is 994. There is no number with 993 at the end as a float. So, and you say, hey, it is a huge number. No, the number is not so huge. The number is the number of nanoseconds in 100 days. So this is probably a number that maybe you are going to work with. And still, if you uh, if you then you have an off, off one, uh, offset of one, then it's probably wrong. So don't uh, use um, floats for things that you can use with or work with uh, integers. Um, another thing with floats is that float is some approximate number. If I take a log and cut one meter from it, then it is never one meter. It's just like around one meter. And if I take number 0 0.1 and then and I add it three times, then I will get a number that is not 0 0.3 because there is no number 0 0.3 in the floating point range uh, of the standard that Python uses. And if you do even more calculations, so for example, like here, I add the number 0 0.3 1 million times, so plus, 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 and then you see that I get a number that is not 300,000. I get some number that is next, a little bit next to it, but it's even wrong. It's not the nearest the float, it's a float somewhere nearby. Um, if I want to work exactly, I can use decimal. So decimal 0 0.3, that is exactly 0 0.3 in our logic of decimal uh, number system. Um, and then I will get the right number. Or I can use fractions. So for example, 3 tenths uh, is a number that uh, is also, if I add it 1 million times, I will also get a number that is correct. But you see on the right time, uh, on the right side, uh, there are the seconds or milliseconds, seconds, how long time this calculation needs. So if you need something really exact, like you are working with finance, uh, this, then use, of course, decimal or even uh, if it takes a little bit longer. Uh, but uh, if you work with some physical, something like temperature or the length of something, then, then use uh, float as it is because it's not exact anyway. So that's okay. Uh, another place where you shouldn't use floats uh, are, for example, numbers that are exact. So for example, one hour is exactly 60 minutes, not 60.0 minutes. So use 60 minutes, and only if you divide, if your number of minutes is, for example, 90, then 90 divided by 60 is already 1.5 approximately, although it is exact. But in the in the point of view of a Python, it is approximately, and uh, but it gives you the right uh, result even if you add or subtract it. Uh, the same for averages. So you don't have to divide by 2.0 because you don't have 2.0 items. You have two items, so divide by integer. So in your code, check. This is something that you cannot do automatically. You have to check manually or search for all occurrences of dot zero in your code. And you will see that there are plenty of um, spots like this uh, that uh, have uh, that use two exact numbers, but they are two exact only because Python 2 did these things differently, wrong, as you see it, but they did it differently. And now if you write Python 3 code, write it correctly, divide by two. Also, if you uh, want to have uh, like the, the rounded, you can use math floor or integer on or then slash slash that also uh, gives you an integer division. Round, that's interesting. Why should you actually use round? I never use round. Um, round gives you now an integer. That's fine. Okay, that's maybe a usage where I could uh, imagine using it. But in Python 2, round returned a float. But a float, there is no float that is exact some number. There is a float that is approximately some number. Um, and even there is something like this, round to two decimal places. That's plain wrong. Why would you want to round to two decimal places? There is no float that is exactly two decimal places exact. Uh, there are some floats that are nearby. And if you want to uh, you have to get two decimal places, that's probably for printing, because of course, if as a human, I don't want to see a floating point number like this. I want to see something that I can read. So with two decimal point, uh, places. Um, so of course, uh, th this is something that I could use, but then I will do it when converting to string. My string can have look like two decimal places, although the number behind that is uh, random or random, it's a floating point number that has any precision. 
Um, or what I can do is uh, like this with equal sign, it, the debugging function of, uh, of the recent Python allows you actually to print it even nicer. Uh, another thing are percentages. Percentages. Um, why would you work with percentages? It means that multiply by 100 if you want to print something, because usually you don't calculate work with percentages. You work with one uh, divided by seven, so one seventh, but you don't work with 14.3. Yeah? Um, and in a Python, you have uh, the possibility actually to format your string with percent, and then it will multiply by 100 and uh, add the percent sign and uh, uh, do the do the math, uh, everything you need. Numeric literals. Um, if you have like a big number uh, and you do something like this, 10 E9 is a float. So if you have one second as an integer multiplied by uh, 10 E9, then you will get a float, which is not exact. You probably want it to have uh, integers. So what you can do, of course, you can write it like this, but it's not legible. Now you can use underscores. It looks a little bit better or 10 to the power of 9, that's also an integer. That's maybe better than, than E9. These were numbers. Then now let's have a look at path. That's something that you absolutely should use because a piece of code that searches for some CSV files, reads them and processes them uh, within a directory, you can write it like this. And that looks much, much, much better. You don't work with uh, paths as strings, you work with them as objects and you have object oriented. So with attributes, you can access everything, parents, uh, uh, name, stem, uh, uh, suffix, everything. You can create directories, you can check everything. So do it like this. And also what is better is that um, if you work with strings, then you work with string, with paths as strings, then you have uh, the strings, uh, the strings, and you don't, you see a string, but you don't know, is it a path or not? But you, if, you have, if you have a path object and you pass it around your functions, then it is clear you are working with path objects. And that's great. So have a look at this, check it, and really you can rewrite your code and make it, make it much, much, much more uh, readable. And of course, if your library supports 3.6 to 3.9, then for example, um, uh, unlink uh, of, of an existing or missing file is not possible before, but from 3.8, you can already use it. So if you have a, a library that supports two, several versions of uh, Python, then you have to write it the first way, but then later uh, rewrite it the second way, and it will be even, even nicer. We have to write nice code. Now. Um, with Pass, you can also use PyTest. As you told me, you are using PyTest already, so that's great. So for example, here, I want to, you want to test something and you want to have a temporary file. Um, the disadvantage of this is it creates somewhere in your temp directory some file that doesn't have a really nice name, it deletes it afterward, so you don't really get it when your done, test is done, um, and you cannot really see it. But for example, in um, Python, also in PyTest uh, with uh, Python 3, you can use temp path and that's a path somewhere in the slash temp. I will show you where. And then you can work with file names that have normal names to, and have names that mean something to you. And for example, in this case, it will create temp PyTest of the user mirror, uh, PyTest1. Then this something is the name of the function and then the name you gave it. And PyTest1 is the first instance of uh, my PyTest. And then if you run it again, it will create a directory PyTest2 with all the test functions uh, below it. And then Python3 and so on. And default is that it will delete, uh, it will keep only the last three PyTest runs and it will delete everything before. So it means that at every time on your system in slash temp, you have the last three runs and you can check, uh, you can see directly the files and they have meaningful names. So that's beautiful use it. Daytime is the last uh, thing uh, we have. Um, for example, in Python 2, you could write something like this if you wanted to have the Unix timestamp, so the number of seconds uh, since 1970 um, of, a, of a daytime, but it, you had to import calendar, so another library from this, uh, another module from the standard library, and then do something like that. That's not beautiful, but it works in both in Python 2 and Python 3. Now you can do something like this, so dt.timestamp and you get the number. Also, you now you don't can don't have an excuse that you should use shouldn't use uh, a time zone uh, aware time uh, because in the standard library there is daytime time zone UTC for the standard UTC stuff uh, and uh, now even from 3.8 3.9 uh, there is zone info uh, which uses the TZ uh, library from your system 
in the StarNet library, so you don't have to import PYTZ or uh, something like that. And now the dates, they, they just work uh, beautifully and you can really work with that um, uh, correctly and explicitly with uh, the time zones. I know time zones are difficult, but uh. um, another thing is uh, time time. So if you have uh, some exp expensive operation, you want to measure it. Time time gives you the number since epoch and then again. But the problem is if during run expensive operation, uh, your system clock will be set to the correct time using NTP, then end minus start can be a negative number. So in that case, uh, use uh, perform, perform counter that gives you the number of seconds each time you call it. And this is the number of seconds since some point in the past, but it is always uh, increasing. Or process time, this is uh, for CPU pro time or for uh, real time. Uh, all of this and even more, uh, wait for a few weeks. Um, and the second edition of the Fluent Python um, book by Luciano Ramayu uh, is uh, going to be published. And it's a book of 1,000 pages um, that contains really plenty of uh, information or plenty of ideas on how to uh, do such beautiful stuff with Python. Uh, it, it is actually the best second book uh, on Python that is available. Uh, full disclaimer, I am one of the technical reviewers. So the question is, should we return to Python 2? Do you want to keep the backdoors in your code? Here's the plan. When someone uses a feature you don't understand, simply shoot them. This is easier than learning something new. And before too long, the only living coders will be writing in an easily understood tiny subset of Python 096. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your uh, interesting talk. Um, I think there was a, a discussion about um, uh, blue versus black um, packages. Um, so if um, if we could maybe uh, know what you think about the, this issue. Uh it's your choice stick with one version like with black or blue or yeah. um the problem is that if sometimes they even change their mind because uh, they update from time to time so i would really stick with one version of black and then update it uh, once a year when you also update the version of python and you also update the uh, some syntax uh, of your code but what do you think about blue and black what is your opinion um i think the blue one is better because and newer. <laughs> it has a different opinion on some stuff that has been criticized in black. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks a lot for your talk today. Uh, we're very happy that we had this amazing opportunity to listen to you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I am available at the booth of uh, Trayport. Uh, happy to chat uh, with everyone and later meet you in person. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.